Today we're going to talk about trace length and adjusting your traces when you're hitching to your vehicle. Um, I get asked a lot how tight they should be or how loose they should be. And then I have people contact me who've had accidents because their tra and simply was their traces were not adjusted correctly. So I'm just going to talk about it a little bit and show you um, what I do. You can take that or leave it, but I'm going to show you what I do and how I kind of gauge when they're the correct uh, length. So I'm going to show you a few things and, we'll, and I'll discuss what I think we need to discuss. This is the K-Bike, which is just, it's similar to the Hyperbike. And so the single tree is located under the seat. So typically what happens with this kind of, sorry about the dog. What happens with this kind of vehicle is your traces need to be a little bit longer because the single tree is further away. A lot of people end up having slack in their traces. So when you're not moving and the horse is just standing, you're not on a hill, you're fairly flat, you want a little bit of tension in the trace. You do not want that trace hanging down like this, that's for sure. And you don't want to be pulling so that it's constantly pulling that bike into the back of your pony. You don't want that either. I'm going to show you when it's too long what can happen. I'll make it ridiculously long. All right, so I've just made them as long as they can go. So if you can see what would happen when we stop, that it would take this long for the breeching to engage. And when we go, it would take this long for the breast collar to engage. So you have this sort of slapping back and forth movement. Um, you could shorten your breeching, but that, like on your hyper bike, the K bike has this ring here. So it can't come out of the shaft loop, but on like a hyper bike or a different type of little vehicle where your shafts are this close to your single ch or to your shaft loops, the, when you sit in the seat, you can actually lift it up and it will slide right out of the shaft loops and then you're in big trouble. If your shafts come out of your shaft loops and you're sitting in that seat, you're still connected by the traces and it's a, it's a big wreck. So having your traces the right length is very, very important. This is as tight as I can make my traces. So now here we have this. I can't move that thing at all. There's no movement. And this is tight, but it is pulling really hard. You can see his face. He's not thrilled. He's wondering what the heck. So this is too tight. This, uh, this horse is now jammed into this vehicle. That's not okay either. So as in life, there is a happy medium. And for me, in this vehicle, that's to have this on the middle hole. The front buckles are on the middle hole on both sides. And now we'll look at this. Aha! So for stopping, when you go to stop, that's the movement you get before the breaching engages. To start again, that's the movement before the breast collar engages. It's minute, it's small. Another thing I want to talk about how you can know if your traces are the correct length is watching your shaft loops here. When you, when your horse starts to pull, I'll put, I'll insert a video here of him pulling me in the K bike. When he starts to pull, what happens to those shaft loops? Do they swing forward? Do they pull backward? If those don't stay straight up and down, then your traces aren't adjusted correctly. <laughs> chut, chut. Boy. Yeah. Because you're pulling from your saddle and not your breast collar. This is especially, especially important when you're going downhill. Now, when you're going downhill, what's going to dictate how your shaft loops move is your holdback straps. So when you start to go downhill, if your shaft loops get pushed forward, that means your saddle is acting as your brake and your holdbacks are too loose. So that's what we talk about when there's a balance in the pulling of the breast collar, actually, excuse me, the pushing of the breast collar and the pushing of the bridging. They have, you have a certain balance between how much pressure you have coming from the front and how much you have from the back that keeps everything flowing beautifully right in the middle. 
Another way to tell if your traces are adjusted correctly is how, how does your vehicle follow your horse? So when you're walking, typically things are pretty okay. So when things are working well, just walking won't really, I mean, if things aren't working, just walking isn't really going to help you know that. But when you move up into a trot or you move up into a canter, what is your vehicle doing? If your vehicle is rocking and rolling and pushing back and forth when you're trotting and cantering and you're really getting this uh, rocking motion like a rocking horse, that means your traces are too loose and you need to snug them up a little bit. There should not be a violent back and forth that occurs in your cart when you go up in speed. Um, of course, there's going to be a little bit. You're going to have a little bit because the animal is moving, and so you're going to have a little bit of that. But if your vehicle is really going back and forth hard, then your traces aren't correctly adjusted. And often neither is your holdbacks. So your holdbacks will help hold your horse correctly in the shafts as well as the traces. All right, so here's my cart set up as the training cart. Notice the shaft loops. See how they're pulled back? They're not hanging straight. That's because my traces are too long. So it's allowing everything to slide back. Here I'm adjusting the bridging because it was a little bit too tight, so I'm just loosening it. Okay, so ironically, I had to tighten my traces up to the shortest that they go. Um, so with the K-Bike, I had to be in the middle hole. And with the when it's set up as a training cart with the single tree here, I need my traces as short as they'll go. So that just shows how even though the hyper bike, the K-Bike, all those bikes are close to the pony, the single tree's under the seat. So you have more, you actually have more space for the traces to travel. So as you can see now, my shaft loops are straight and we would be good to go as is. Okay, I wanna talk about uh, traces. So these are called buckle-in traces and that is because they buckle to the breast collar right here. And then it goes down and these are the combo end so they have a ring and a slot. Um, you adjust how far away they are from the front of the cart by these holes here and moving this trace forward and backward on the buckle. So right now I'm on my last hole to make it as short as I can. When I'm on the hyperbike, I have to be on one, two, three, the, let's see, one, two, three, the third hole from each end. One, two, three, one, two, three, the middle hole. That's where I have to be for the K-bike. Um, and then I'll show you with the sled, the sled hook, hook up too. But um, this is how you would adjust the length of your traces and where the horse is in the shafts. So this is how the single tree will work when the traces are attached and you want that movement so you don't get a sore pony so their shoulders aren't sore. The shafts are just floating in the loops and there's plenty of space between him and the single tree. Ah, there's my baby. So we will do a little trot so we can see how the cart follows him. Zorro. Oliver, please don't jump on us. Zorro, trot. Trot. So there's no push-pull on the cart. It's just following him real smooth. We're gonna go out here. <laughs> oh, my baby, so adorable. Let's see how well it handles the track. Now I'm going to 
gonna adjust the traces for a low line of draft. I'm just gonna use my little sled. Know that it's not safe to pull a sled like that without shafts, um, but if you were to be dragging tires or something, this is how you would adjust your trace length. And my tires are buried in a pile over there and they're really heavy. They're all chained together and there's four of them and I can't move them by myself. So I'm just gonna show this with the sled, but um, it's just to show how long your traces should be. So a couple things is, so he has his collar and hames on for low line of draft. I have it buckled on the longest hole because you usually need more length as the line of draft drops. My trace keepers are on their longest hole as well to hold it as it comes down to the ground. Usually I would use quick release. Um, shackles but I don't have any handy so I'm just using a pear-shaped spring snap um, and of course if your pony if you can't kneel down behind him like this then please don't do that um, so I'm going to snap these onto the traces and then we'll pull this back so those are quite long so what you'll do then is to get your length just right you can shorten it with the chain Loop it back like that, shorten it, and then rehook it to your trace. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I did six lengths. One, two, three, four, five, six. You want it to be the same on both sides so it's even. So this shows him with his traces and his heel chains and the single tree. And then when he would be getting to move and there's weight back here, that single tree will come up and you can see how much room he has. This is 22 inches on the ground. Twenty eight or so when the single tree lifts. So that's about what I like to see. Um, you could have it be a little bit closer if we want to do some long trotting in the deep snow, especially in the deep snow. I like there to be enough space between here and here so this isn't going to bump up and hit him in the hocks. So I just like a lot of space. And again, you can adjust these heel chains by just linking up the links a little bit shorter and make them shorter. These are connected to my single tree with quick release shackles. So, take a little shot from the side. Good boy, Zoro. Good boy. That is what that looks like. Hopefully this little video will help answer some questions you may have had about trace length, looseness, tightness, what's too tight, what's too loose. Um, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can email me. I'll leave my email at the end of the video. Thank you so much. Don't push that over. Boy. <laughs> okay. <sighs> He's helpful. All right. And um, I hope everybody has a great day. <sighs> Any question? No. Okay. Oh, so, um. I didn't get to get into too much detail, but as usual, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much.